and give honor where honor is due. I've given some thought to what God wants to say this morning, and I want to just talk briefly to you about honoring women. We honor Mother's Day, and there's many people that feel bad sometimes on Mother's Day. And they have all these different kind of reasons why they feel bad. Some say, well, because I can't have kids. Others say, because my mom wasn't a good mom. Others say, I wasn't a good mom like I should have been. But the Bible lets us know that God is the one that created mothers. When you look at the text in Genesis chapter 1, you have to understand what God was doing. When God said, let us make man in our image, he goes on in verse 28 and said, God created him male and female. Created he them. When he created female, he created motherhood. Right there at that point. He didn't create motherhood when they had a child. He created motherhood when he made a woman. Because the woman is the very embodiment of what it takes to have a child. When sin came into the world, sin corrupted everything. Sometimes we forget that. We think that, oh, I can't have a child, so something's wrong with me. Ain't nothing wrong with you, honey. Sin came into the world, and it corrupted, someone say, everything. It messed with people's bodies. It messed with people's minds. It messed with people's hearts. And the very nature of what God had created has been twisted in many regards. But just because sin came into the world and twisted something, does that mean that God does not honor what he created in the first place? I think with me this morning it's going to be okay. It's going to be quick and be over. But I need to say what God wants me to say. Because we have now come into a place where our nation has come to a point where they dishonor women. Because they do not understand the very created nature of a woman. God honored women. When God created man and women, he looked at them and said, it is good. Not only did he say it was good, he said it is very good. He said it's so good that I want the man to leave his mother and father. You can't leave your mother and father that easy. He said, this woman is so good, you need to leave your mama and daddy and cleave to her, hang on to her with dear life. God created women. He created something special. He put something in women that men don't have. The devil, down through the years, have tried desperately to destroy women, but have not been able to. Because he understands the value that a woman holds in a society. Tried to turn women into men. To try to destroy womanhood, try to turn men into women, to try to pervert womanhood. But he has not been able to be successful because God created man, he and he created woman. And God honors women. Women have always played a pivotal point in the game of life throughout history. You know, men can't have a kid. Only women can. Why they need a man? No, they don't. But Mary didn't have no man. So don't, don't get me started. Man can't have a kid. Only women can. And there's responsibility of men and women to replenish the earth. It was a mandate given to them from God. Not only did he tell them to be fruitful and multiply, but he says, listen, I give y'all power. Sometimes we get this thing twisted. We think the man got power and the women don't have no power. But I want you to look at the scripture here in verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And I want them to subdue it. Not just the man, the woman too. And I want them to have dominion over the fish. I want the women to have the same dominion that man has. Why do you think the 
Spirit he brought women out from the side of man and not from the head and not from the foot. Because we are to be working together to fulfill the will of God in the earth. And the devil hates it when he finds a couple that understand the responsibilities of each. You read the scripture like I read in 1 Peter. It says that you don't dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Because they are the weaker vessel. It's not weaker and spiritual. It's that they're made different. Women shouldn't be picking up everything. That's the man's job. And we used to understand that. But now we got men standing back trying to get the, the women. She dragging the baby. Got four bags of groceries and pushing the stroller. And a man walking around talking on the phone. And he think that's okay because he doesn't understand. Listen, dwell with your wife according to knowledge. She's weaker than you. Grab the bags, brother. Hello. Well, I'm going to teach somebody this morning real good. Because the Lord said to give honor to what honor is due. And our nation has come to a place where we don't honor women anymore. We don't open the door for them anymore. We don't say kind words to them anymore. We try to treat them like they're less than we are. We try to beat them down. We call them all kind of filthy names. We talk about them. We try to tell them they're no good. You're not this and you're not that. That the Lord said, that's why your prayers not being asked. You think that God honors you dishonoring what God created? God created man and woman. Nation full of heathens. Making our young girls into hoochie mamas. Degrading them, making them feel shame. And we're walking around like there's something good. Honoring men that are singing music that's degrading women. That's a rebuke from the devil. Trying to make us feel like somehow we are to accept this kind of treatment to the women that God gave us. You gotta recognize the power of a woman in your life. We gotta recognize the power of women in the Word of God. Who in the world could have brought forth Samuel, the greatest prophet that ever lived? A woman by the name of Hannah. They said, couldn't have no kids. Let me, let me tell you something. See, we, we in the church, sometimes we just get stuff so twisted and mixed up. We fall in line with the world like it's nobody's business. We get caught up in, 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 in what I call the herd mentality. If everybody else says it, we say it. Totally disregarding the word of God. See, we we, we got to have this population control. Because the world is getting too populated. Listen, don't you know you can't have a baby if God don't let you have a baby? If God wants to have population control, he just let you not have no kids. You don't have kids because you want to have kids. You have kids because God gives you kids. Don't you understand? That's demonic to have abortions and to destroy what God is causing you to, to deliver. He says to replenish the earth. We got to recognize what's really going on. We can't, we can't buy in to the world's philosophy and, and thinking that somehow we have all this kind of control. You don't have all the control that you think you have. You don't have control over your body like you think you have. God is the one that's in control of your body. God will give it to you and God will take it away. People get mad at God because they have a baby and the baby dies in the womb. They didn't want to have an answer. God has a decision on that. He decides who lives and who dies. And he decides when they live and when they die. God created man. God created woman. And he's created woman for a purpose. They are strong when they need to be strong. They are weak when they need to be weak. They're supportive when they need to be supportive. They're assertive when they need to be assertive. When all the men went to World War II, who ran the country? Men dying in the trenches, women at home, working in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the machines, making bullets and making tanks. Strong when they need to be strong. Sensitive when they need to be sensitive. When your baby goes to jail, hey, your daddy ain't coming down there. be all right. He calling you a knucklehead and everything else, but your mama. Let me tell you something. I, I'm not ashamed to talk about the value of women. Even if you as a woman don't think you're valuable, I know that you're valuable. 
Even if you as a woman have been beaten down by somebody else that told you you're not worth nothing. Listen, I don't agree with them. I agree with God. God said you're worth everything. That's why he created you and said it was very good. Because the king has signed a decree. He's been tricked. And all of us are getting ready to die on Monday at 2 o'clock. Your cousin's going to die on Monday at 2 o'clock. Your nephews, your aunties, your, your brother, your sister, they're all going to die on Monday at 2 o'clock. She said, I, I can't go to the king. Because if the king, if he don't call you in, then if you go walking up in there like you got, you got something going on, it's only one law. Yeah. Imagine the pressure on your life as a woman for a whole nation knowing that if you don't go to the king, the whole nation gets slaughtered. I mean, the Lord put this story here for a reason. Plus to recognize the power of the woman. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther in verse 13, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? We know how the story goes. She said, y'all need to pray. Oh, bless the name of the Lord, praying women. We see that all through the word of God. Praying women. We see a few praying men. See a whole bunch of praying women. Praying for nation. Praying for men. Praying for souls. She went the next day, chapter 5. It was so. When the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, looking real good. But guess this. You were looking all tacky, hair, hair all messed up, wearing little house slippers and stuff. Oh, yeah, we're going to get this straight. We're going we gonna to help somebody this morning. She wasn't going to Walmart. 